Hi there, and welcome to this video. In this session, I am briefly going to cover portfolio risk on the port function. Now, to put this portfolio into context, here is a list of the current holdings. The main exposures of this portfolio are to the UK and the US. And it is built up with a range of about 24 stocks and as you can see the biggest holding here is in this American IT firm. Now in the port function we can look at ex ante risk and post ante risk. Now to look backwards, so to look at the performance to date or the risk to date we can look at the performance tab and statistical summary. In here you'll see a range of ex post risk, uh, ex ante risk factors annualized. Now depending on how long your portfolio has been running for you may need to customize this and change it to number of trading days for instance and Bloomberg will calculate how much risk it's over the time scale you set. If you are to select a benchmark here and press run, you will then get a list of risk adjusted performance measures compared to the benchmark. And again, you'd have to change the portfolio time horizon. Also, a quick trick of how to get Uh, risk over individual stocks. If again, if we go to the performance main page without a benchmark selected, on here you may see standard deviation listed. However, if not, go add or remove field and type in what you're looking for here, or you can go to the ex post risk and then have a look with a range of different uh, risk factors to choose from. Also on this side, you can edit the time horizon. So if you are to look at standard deviation, for instance, Bloomberg will use their default method for over a year. However, on the pencil, I had already changed this to over four week horizon. So on here, whatever standard deviation you're looking for, you can set the uh, time horizon here and obviously the periodicity. Uh, also, you can change how many decimal places depending on how accurate you want the uh, position. And if you don't want it to be annualized and you just want it to be what's happened in the last, well, however the portfolio is running, then de click this. Press update, then return you will get, like I said, a column saying individual standard deviation and then you can sort by uh, toggling at the top. Now that's looking backwards, but Bloomberg has some powerful tools to look forward to say what is my predicted volatility over the next time horizon. And this is where the tracking error and volatility function comes in. Now things to notice on here is first of all the model. If you want to read up on how the, the methodology behind these models, you'll have to look at the white papers by pressing help uh, and port in the command line and go to white papers. But for a rule of thumb, pick the one that is most relevant to your portfolio. So as I said, this is a UK and American fund, therefore I'm just going to select the global equities fundamentals model but if you are just using UK or European obviously you'd go for European and so on. Over here I've got it selected as of today uh, and also I'm ax I will only want to find out the volatility over the next quarter time horizon here. Now the most useful screen to look at is actually the summary page. So it was already preset, global, over the next quarter, and 
what I'd suggest first of all is do not have a benchmark selected. Just look at the portfolio in isolation. And on here you have some looking forward characteristics. So my portfolio is worth 100,000 for 24 stocks. This number here looks at the active total risk or the expected standard deviation volatility over the next quarter. So the top half is in standard deviation, the second half is in percentage factor from uh, the percentage contribution factor from my individual stocks. So first of all, I'll stick to the top plate, the top, the top section. From this 6.77 standard deviation, we can click on that and kind of see where most of the risk is decomposed from. As you can see, quite a lot is actually coming from country risk. If we click on that, it will obviously show my exposure to America and Europe. Now, to understand more of where the risk is coming from, you have factor risk and non-factor risk. Factor risk is more market risk or systematic risk. Non-factor risk is idiosyncratic risk or risk of indi from individual stocks. So because this is an equity portfolio only, if we click on factor risk or market risk, you can see where the most uh, the risk is coming from. So we can see again country, there's sort of certain standard deviations uh, of risk from individual countries. Uh, what's useful here again you can have a look at the currency, so how much expected risk or expected volatility you are expecting the currency markets over the next quarter. And you can see because most because this is priced in pounds and I've got some exposure to the US, you can see there's about 3.2% standard deviation uh, expected. Also you can look at industry, so for instance you can see I'm heavily exposed to um, most of my expected risk is more from the healthcare sector. Why you could use this is if the if you have one sector that was overweighted and most expected risk was going to come from that one sector, you may want to reduce your risk. Or if you change to exposure, you can see where the most exposure is coming from, and you can reduce that instead. And that would be also useful for forecasting. If you expect most of your risk to come from the healthcare sector, then you might want to start digging a bit deeper on the other portfolio, on the other functions in Bloomberg to suggest why the healthcare sector is expected to be volatile and reduce your exposure accordingly. You also have something called style, and this is shows where most of your risk will come from related to how your portfolio is set up. So for instance if you're not very active then you may face quite a lot of risk because in this portfolio for instance uh, it's an all buy and hold strategy therefore I'm, um, Bloomberg knows I'm not very active so I may, because I'm not active I may miss out for instance and not uh, react accordingly, therefore I potentially face some expected risk exposure there because I'm not very active in management. But you also have other things like dividend yield, uh, volatility, profitability. Uh, obviously I'm not borrowing any money so I'm not exposed to leverage. Now moving on from the market risk, you can have a look at idiosyncratic risk. And on here it will give you a an, ex an expectation of volatility for individual stocks. So again, as shown at the very beginning, I have a big holding of this Broadcom limited company. Therefore, you'd expect most of my factor risk to come from this one stock. So I could potentially use this to then think, well, actually, should I be exposed to this company or should I reduce my exposure accordingly? Also on the bottom half, when I say risk contribution, this kind of looks at where's the risk coming from in absolute rather than in standard deviation. Um, so as you can see, most of my 
percentage of my tool, the percentage of my tool risk for individual non-packer gain has come from this one company. So seven point sorry, six point seven two percent of my overall total risk is from that one exposure. So if this was much higher, um, then potentially you may think, well, I should might might want to reduce the risk there. And as you can see, my portfolio, only 13% of the overall risk is coming from currency, expected currency fluctuations. So really that's relatively low compared to current market risk. So therefore my exposure to the dollar isn't as great and isn't that much of an issue relative to market risk from just the market in America itself. Interesting things here, uh, risk bets is also another useful function, so you kind of look at where where most of your risk is coming from, which which uh, are your top five riskiest bets, and at least five, so these five are your more defensive strategies compared to your more aggressive here. Again, if your contribution is quite significant for an individual stock, you might want to look into that a bit more. Also, you can see how, how total risk has changed throughout time. If I go back to the tracking error function and look at trend, you can see how much the active total risk has changed throughout the custom time horizon and see how much my portfolio, portfolio expected risk has changed. Obviously, as you can see here, it's had a downward trend in the last quarter. Uh, or last quarter, which is good to see. Another function to look for is the value at risk tab and the VAR comparison. So on here, you can select again, don't pick a benchmark, again have the, the same model selected, and then select a time horizon. So I want to look at over the next quarter at a 95% uh, confidence level. And on this function, you can see in nominal value, what is the worst expected loss given value at risk, whether it be via a Monte Carlo simulation, the use of a historic simulation, the use of a parametric method of calculating value risk. So at the 95 confidence level, the most I'm expected to lose is about a tenth of my portfolio. And the bottom half kind of drills down a bit. Where's this risk coming from? Now, because I've sorted it by none, you, it is actually a list of individual stocks. So you can see in the worst case scenario, the most I'm set to lose Again, it's from my biggest exposure, it's Broadcom Limited. What you can do if you look at the partial VAR, that will tell you if I was to remove this stock from my portfolio, how much my value at risk will decrease. So again, my top three biggest bets here, as you see from the previous function, are kind of listed as my biggest value at risk exposure. Therefore, Again, I might want to investigate in this company and reduce my holdings. This is useful because you can toggle between the different methods. So if you don't believe in Monte Carlo simulation and you think it's uh, assumptions and model characteristics are flawed, you can change the historical, historical or the, the parametric method. And again, it will give you a list of where most of value risk is expected. Another useful risk function is the scenarios tab uh, and on here it will potentially give you a list of scenarios that historical examples where they've run, they've simulated your portfolio given the event. So if another Russian financial crisis would happen, my portfolio will potentially lose uh, 36,000 nominal value 
On this, what you can do on the main screen is create a simulation yourself um, by clicking and adding it to the top. Or again, this, you can do this furthermore on the scenario navigator. Um, and this would be useful if you want to create your own simulation. So, for instance, if you're ex if you're heavily exposed to gold, you could potentially create a scenario where the gold price drops by a certain percent. Run the simulation; it will tell you how much your portfolio may be exposed. Just to recap, everything I've said. If you type in help port press enter you'll get all the help needed to understand the different tabs thank you for watching this video